Joining us now is a man who's up for the coach of the year in this season of the NFL. What has he been tasked with? Well, when you get to the place whose culture seemingly has completely fallen apart, your best player isn't going to want to play there. You're going to have a brand new rookie quarterback. You're going to have to build literally from the ground up, brick by brick, through this entire thing with some distractions along the way. Where's he at now? Oh, I don't know. Might win the AFC South in his Ooh. first year. Ladies and gentlemen, head coach of the Indianapolis Colts, Shane Steichen. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, Shane. What's up, fellas? Hey, what's up, dude? You're doing great. I'll How's the Thunderdome? It's great. You remember, uh, I think you made a shot, missed a couple, mm -hmm. made a couple other mm -hmm. ones right over here. The spot is saved for you whenever the offseason comes mm -hmm. around after the Super Bowl. Of course. Mm -hmm. For you to come back in anytime. We appreciate you joining us on this day. I guess my first question will be, the last time we saw you, you were a zero win, zero loss mm -hmm. head coach. Going into a season with a rookie quarterback in the Jonathan Taylor situation. Now... You're a guy that's up for coach of the year. Why do you think it has gone this way this year for your team? This is not normal. I don't know if you know that, but this is not a, a normal thing to take place, especially with all the distractions that could have been taken as distractions earlier in the year. Why do you think you are where you are right now with your team? I think it's a credit to the players, uh, the players and the coaches. I truly believe your best players uh, and your best coaches are your best people. And uh, I think when you got good people uh, in the building uh, that want to do things the right way and work hard, I think that goes a long way. You know, there's going to be ups and downs in a season. Shoot, we lost three in a row, and we were three and five, right? And shoot, we had to climb out of a hole, but we had to do it together. And uh, everyone was on board. And uh, shoot, the secret to success, like we always talk about, is working hard. That's what it is, right? Everyone says work, you know, work smarter, not harder. I think you got to work smarter and harder. And uh, I think that's the secret to success, and that's what we got to get done. Got it, AJ. How do you work smarter and harder? I know we, we talk about that a lot, but what can you do, especially as the season progresses? I'm sure every single day you're trying to come up with new things to kind of stimulate guys. Yeah, no, that's a good question. I think part of it is uh, doing the little extra things and the details. All that stuff matters. And, you know, with players especially, you know, it's a grind. As you know, being a former player um, is putting in that extra work. You know, November and December football is important. And when you got a chance uh, in playing meaningful football, mean, meaningful football in December, um, you got to do everything in your power to get your mind and your body right. And if that means, you know, watching an extra 45 minutes of tape, uh, getting more treatment, more time in the weight room, whatever that is, get, get that done because you never know. You watch that extra 45 hour, hour of film, you know, you fi might find that little nugget that's going to win you the football game. And uh, that's what we want to do here as uh, players and coaches. Having players that buy into that is obviously a weapon, uh, but having coaches that adjust to their players is a big deal as well. Whenever we talked to you and Anthony Richardson was going to be the guy that you were going to have to build an offense around, you said, I'm going to make use of all the things that make him special. We saw him a lot of running. Mm -hmm. He was electrifying mm -hmm. early. Obviously, he has a shoulder injury. He's out for a year. Now Gardner Minshew is the guy. He was with you in Philadelphia. Whenever we signed him to Indianapolis, we were all pretty excited and we assumed it would work. So if you had to put a pause on the offense that you were building for Anthony Richardson to build a Gardner Minshew offense that you've been running this year, or are they similar? Or what have you had to do differently now that Gardner's the guy as opposed to the young superstar that was electrifying Anthony Richardson in his first year? Yeah, you adjust a little bit. Uh, obviously, the terminology stays the same. Um, it's just adjusting uh, certain little things. Um, you know, the pass game is the pass game in my eyes. Um, but obviously there's things, you know, obviously the zone read stuff. We don't do a ton uh, with Gardner. Uh, but, you know, Gardner stepping in uh, to the role he stepped in uh, has been tremendous. I mean, just a great competitor. A guy, again, like I've talked about, just loves football, loves the process of it. And every time we step on that field, he gives us a chance to win. And uh, that's what you want uh, in your quarterback. Um, and he's been great for us. The boys have rallied around him. Even since, like, the day in training camp when I was there, the, the way the offensive linemen were talking about Anthony Richardson, they love him, obviously, and they're like, Gardner Minshew, like, we love this guy as well. He said, fully focused on ball, fully committed to ball, acted like a starter, was willing to help out Anthony Richardson as well. Seems to be the perfect guy for the situation that you are in right now. Yeah, no, he was great. I mean, just to have a guy that's you know knows the system, knows the terminology, and then he's been tremendous with Anthony. You know, in that role uh, when he was in that role earlier in, early in the season uh, with Anthony, helping him along with you know all our coaches, uh, Jim Bob Cooter, offensive coordinator, Cam Turner, our quarterback coach, uh, getting these guys prepared and ready to play. Uh, like I said, it, it's been great to have Gardner here. Yeah, he's fun to watch too. His little shoulder shimmies and his little hips. He'll throw a pick. 
Don't, mm -mm. Does not phase him. Nope. Mm -mm. He's going right back in there and throwing dots all over the place. We love watching him. It's not just through the sky, though. d Bud has a question for you. Yeah, Shane. speaking of something fun, fun to watch, especially as a former Colt against those Steelers this past Saturday. I don't know how many straight runs it was. I think 17, 18. But what was the thought process behind that? Was that a mindset thing? Because I know as a defender, absolutely demoralizing when an offense does that to you. I know we were banged up in the, in the backfield. But what was the mindset with you calling those plays? Yeah, I think the biggest thing there was, you know, we had the lead there, uh, you know, whatever it was, late in the third, early in the fourth, and uh, shoot, let's run a little bit and see where this thing goes. And obviously, you got to have success running it to keep calling runs. And uh, you know, you're getting, you know, whatever it was, four yards a pop. Keep calling them. Don't get bored calling the same plays over and over again. Um, you know, if you're having success with them, and our guys up front did a heck of a job. All five of those guys in the backs that stepped in. Uh, Goody uh, and Trey Sermon were running hard. It was it was it was awesome to see all those guys. Had no idea Sermon was on our team. That we had no. I, I'm sitting in there, and they say Trey Sermon. I'm like, that's oh, Ohio State guy. We got. Mm -hmm. He's a good ball player. Ball. He, he's a he's a great ball player. And then this Goodson guy. I'm like, who the hell is? I, there was a couple guys I'd never heard of, and it's like this is the story of this Colts team this year. A lot of big injuries. A lot of big people out. And you've just kind of maintained and kept it moving. Got stars at the right place. Feels like the culture's all the way back. Can you feel that? Can you feel your culture kind of settling in with the locker room? Can you feel the culture in there? Yeah, I mean, it, it, part of it is to winning, right? That helps it, right? I mean, of you course. can build the culture and shoot, here's the culture and this is how we want it to look like, but you got to go win. You know what I mean? And every that's the mindset every time we step on the field. Like, we're going to win a football game, right? And that, we, we don't want to settle for anything less. And shoot, we know it ain't going to be perfect every time we step out there. There's going to be good times. There are going to be bad times. But let's go out with the mindset that we're going to win this game and shoot. I don't know what it's going to look like. We don't know how it's going to look, but we're going to play together and do it together. Well, it's worked. Yeah. yeah. It's been fun to watch, Coach. The Loud House, Lucas Oil Stadium, mm -hmm. has been enjoying it. I've seen a couple mic'd up moments of you, too. I like your moxie on the sideline. Mm -hmm. I like the way you handle the boy. I like mm -hmm. the speeches afterwards. Shane, you're special, man. A lot of Indianapolis is falling in love with you. I hope you know that. Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Coach, this might be something you look at like after the season's over, but is, is there one area of being a head coach that you can point to and say, like, oh, I'm so much better doing that now than I was at the start of the season or when I first got the job? Um. Yeah, that's probably an after the season thing, but you know, it's really just the whole the whole picture, right? It's everything that goes with it. You know, obviously coming from a coordinator position to being a head coach, uh, just kind of you know overseeing a little bit of everything, right? Obviously, you you know you have fifty three guys when you're a coordinator. You got you know whatever it is, twenty eight, thirty guys um, to worry about, and you know that's what it is. And it's having a you know looking over the whole picture. But again, I'm very fortunate. The guys I got around me, the staff I have around me, uh, the players that we have. Just good dudes that love football, and that's that's what you want, you know? Yeah, absolutely. We love watching it because over the last couple of years, Colts fans, boy, boring football. Yep. yep. Hey, you do not call a boring game, by the At way. All. At all. Which I am very, very grateful for. You're a fun 20 point. There was a run there where you were the only mm -hmm. team in the NFL that had scored 20 points every single week, and we're dealing with the same injuries that everybody else is dealing with. You're a wep you're a fucking weapon, Shane. Yeah. Speaking of that, go ahead, Con Man. Yeah, coach, obviously right now looking around the NFL, there are certain teams that, you know, lost a lot of guys. The former team you had, Philly, you know, there's a lot of conversation about how losing you and Gannon in the same offseason was a much is a much bigger deal now looking back on it with you know what's going on over there but is that something you ever think about with your staff now in Indianapolis kind of the fear of other coaches getting poached obviously you want them all to have great success and to you know move up the ladder but at the same time is that something you keep in the back of your mind like hey I might have to replace some of these guys just because they are so good and they're going to get more opportunities elsewhere yeah, that, that's part of the business. Obviously, obviously, that's in the back of your mind, but I do. I, I want all my coaches on staff. When we have success, right, shoot, if they have a chance to move up the ranks, like, don't hold them back from doing that. Like, that, that's a big deal. Obviously, people have goals on uh, this profession, uh, you know, to move up the ranks. And if those opportunities, uh, you know, take them to new heights, I, I think that's awesome. Hey, what do you think about Jim Irsay? Huh? I saw him He's dancing. The man. I saw him dancing. He's the man. Dancing in your life. Oh, yeah. Didn't it? Yeah, he was getting after it right next to you. You're like oh, two yeah. feet away, and you take. I assume that was the first time you've seen Jim Irsay dance. I'm not 100 percent sure. You, but, yeah, he was getting it. Yeah, he getting after mm -hmm. it. Getting it. Learning of Jim Irsay and learning about Jim Irsay. How has that been this year for you? What a it's one of one, one of one. Nobody really ever will understand that. 
Yeah, he, he loves he loves the Colts, as we all know, um, and he's all about winning, right? And and, and the resources uh, that he's provided since I got here uh, have been second to none. And uh, just a tremendous person, generous as all get out, um, and just loves the Colts. Loves you know loves the passion for this organization. Loves the passion, uh, has the passion for this city. And uh, shoot, it's our job, you know, as an organization to you know go put on a show uh, every Sunday. We step out there. Did you feel obligated? You guys are kind of dancing there. <laughs> Hell, but you know, you, you oh, no, I was rolling with them. I was rolling with them pretty good. I'm like, shoot, he's got it. Let's go. Yeah, I thought you were going to make him jump in. We had a little, you know, Jim, that's Shane's arm right there. Yep. Mm-hmm. That circulation. Though. Yeah, he was. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's squeezing the hell out of that. Yeah, breaking him. Yeah, he's squeezing the hell especially with Jim Irsay. rolling. Look at him. Former strength. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Absolute dog. The boy's having a good time. Love that in the locker room. Heck yeah. Go ahead, AJ. Coach, uh, speaking of celebrations, have you had the chance to hang out with Gardner's father at all and get one of his uh, celebratory hugs where he smacks the hell out of your chest and gives you a few bruises, but you know, hey, you're, you are loved? I have. I have it. I got, I, got, I got to meet his dad. I'm sure he'll be at the game on Sunday, so I'll have to holler at him uh, after the game. But I was there, shoot, when we were in Philly, uh, that Jets game he won. Shoot, that was awesome to see. I was just sitting on the bus watching it. Uh, it was it was it was awesome to see that stuff. It's it's special. Leather jacket too. Oh, I mean, yeah. absolute what? dog. Absolute. Oh, the weapon. bomber. Yeah, the bomber. Jacket. Sick. Phenomenal. The Minshew story in the Minshew mania right now, in the Minshew mania in Jacksonville. You know, like yeah. it, it is. Uh, it's been almost everywhere he goes. Now, where you were in Philadelphia, mm. big time play. Go ahead, Tone. Yeah, Coach. I got a question, and now that you're not there, I want an honest. Uh, answer from you. Did you create the tush push or was it someone else on that staff? And do you need a quarterback that squats 600 pounds to do the tush push successfully? Well, I will say that they do a heck of a job of doing that. And it starts up front with Kelsey and Jalen and the guards. Uh, the way they get low uh, and create that push uh, is phenomenal. And obviously they've been doing it uh, at a high level for the last two years. Um, shoot, I know we've had some wrinkles off it. They do wrinkles off it still. Um, but it's 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 pretty it's pretty impressive to see every time they do it. So who created it? Huh? That's a real. Sure, we were we were in there. I don't. Nick Nick came up like, hey, let's put a pusher there. And then the next week we're like, oh, let's do another pusher. And then we just and then it just took off, man. It took off. They're trying to get them now. You saw that false start last night. I don't know if you got a chance to see it. It's. Uh... Interesting. That's an interesting little wrinkle about did he move the ball, I think is what John Perry said. Yep. We don't know if that's what the actual refs were talking about. But if that's what he does every single time, and Pete Carroll must have alerted the refs to it or whatever, it's like they're trying to stop. Now they're mm-hmm. trying to mm-hmm. they're trying to get it. from. You know what I mean? That's how they're trying to attack it, Coach. Yeah, I mean, shoot, they're having these rules, moving the ball. I know, shoot, uh, shoot we played the Saints. They got called for it down there on the goal line against us when we play them at home, moving the ball. Uh, they're, you know, it's a point of emphasis for them right now uh, in those situations. So, How have you enjoyed all that stuff, like being the head coach now? you got to be the one that is filing the ref reports right and dealing with all the fallout the day afterwards. Not that I remember any Colts games where we've potentially – I don't think we've gotten robbed by these. Oh, yeah, there was one clear one, the bronze game. The bronze game, Oh, yes. Okay. So now dealing with that as a head coach, how are you there? How do you deal with the officials and handle that entire – yep. Yeah, no, I know they got a tough job to do. Shoot, and is it going to be perfect every time? No, not just like we're not going to be perfect every time as coaches and players. Um, But I got a lot of respect for what those guys do, um, and we go from there. Smart. <laughs> nice. Smart. All right. Wow. You're the man. Uh, we appreciate you taking time out of your Tuesday. What do you got the rest of the day? We're game planning right now? Yep. Going to watch some third downs right now. How do we feel? We feel pretty good, coach. We got a team. It feels like we got a team, coach. You like the boys, right? Like the boys. Shoot, it'll be a heck of a challenge. Got a lot of respect for Arthur and uh, what he's got down there in Atlanta. Got a lot of weapons on offense. Shoot, they got good defense. Um, so it'll be it'll be a tough task for us, but we're excited for it. Michael Pittman got folded in half. He's back is what I've heard. Is that right? Feeling good. He's feeling good. He's a dog, dude. Yeah. Yes, he is. Dog. He's an absolute. Yeah, he is, right? Uh, all, yeah. Uh, you got a lot toughness of them. Now. You want to talk about the definition of toughness? It's Michael Pittman. You folded. That guy got suspended the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he, he was on the other end of that. Uh, entire off, year huh? suspension on the other end of it. Folded. Boom. He'll be back, yeah. though. That's Team great. Sunday. Team, love the love with the team that you're building. We appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, head coach of the Indianapolis Colts, Shane Steichen. Yeah, Shane. I appreciate it.